Hello, this is a tutorial into some ways that you might use Photoshop to explore stylization in our study of portraiture. Uh, in our booklet, you'll uh, note that we've uh, looked at some samples of different stylizations, ways that the human face has been changed into a particular style, and we'll be just simulating some of those in a basic sort of way in Photoshop. It's fairly easy to find other resources. We open a portrait of our choosing in Photoshop. Layers are an important part of Photoshop and we make a number of copies because we're going to try a number of different styles. So make sure that you understand how to use the layers and it's a really wise thing to name your layers. Maybe in advance or maybe later, it doesn't much matter when but that helps you to keep track of where you're up to with what you're doing on each layer in Photoshop. So let's uh, get started soon and we'll uh, do a number of different things. We'll look at the Ardman Wallace and Gromit type stylization. Think of Wallace's face. We'll look at uh, some others as well. Now the particular filter that I find very useful is in the filters menu the liquify filter and we're already in it and scrolling through some of the uh, different elements there. Down the left is the toolbox and it has a number of very useful tools that you should experiment with at some stage. The brush size is really important with using the tools because if it's too big it will uh, affect too much, if it's too small it will be uh, very bitsy and piecey. So adjust the brush size uh, well, now with this Ardman style uh, layer, what we're going for is the uh, chubby, chubby cheeks, the chubby jowls, the narrow head, and probably we'll try, try to make the uh, eyes a little bit more bulgy and round, and maybe a very wide mouth might be the sorts of things that we do. So we're using the bloat tool there, it makes the eyes very round. We can uh, be very controlled about that and uh, should get some good results. Now with uh, this push tool that allows us to really drag out a very specific area that we get in the middle of our circle and to control it. The uh, portrait tool is a new, is a new uh, innovation in the latest versions of Photoshop and it uh, really understands that you're working with a portrait and so it's identifying which parts of the nose and the sorts of things that you might like to do as small adjustments with, with uh, that. It's only good for small adjustments because it's designed for, uh, for, for adjusting photographic portraits. And down the right hand side you can actually control and adjust things even down to the smile by the, uh, by the sliding menus. We're going on now to our Disney type approach and just for a different way to trial it, you might actually like to use the transform uh, tool uh, and it allows you to actually change overall shapes. There's various sorts. We're going for the warp transform tool, transform tool, but there are a number of others as well. We're going for a fairly sort of triangular sort of head, uh, which is pretty common in Disney ones, even though this doesn't look particularly like a Disney face. It, uh, it gets the idea across. Now with Disney faces, it's pretty common that you've got the puckered, puckered mouth, the smaller mouth, the smaller chin, maybe even a smaller, smaller nose, and a fairly triangular sort of look. So we've moved, as, you, have you, as you've seen, into the uh, liquify, where we get that little bit more control. And, of course, with the Disney, we have the large, what's sometimes called almond-shaped eyes. And they often tilt to the edges, so you can actually adjust that using your twirl tool. Or you could actually use it in the portrait mode using the, uh, using the tilts. You can change the mouth, the nose, all those sorts of things using those controllers at the right-hand side just as we did with the Yardman, with some success. I'm sure with a little bit more time you could uh, achieve it much more successfully. Now, moving on to the Manga, you could do that the same way, but 
just to trial and experiment with something differently. Again, going to the transform. And I think we tried the perspective one this time, which I don't think is working quite so well. But uh, just to uh, experiment with a range of different things, that's not a bad way to go. I still rely very heavily on going into the liquify filter to really control the look that we're after. So, so again, the fairly triangular sort of shape. You'll note the similarities between the manga, the Japanese manga style, and the uh, Disney Disney style, and it's no accident, but let's make that little pin nose even smaller, which is a notable thing in, in manga. Now, what we're going to do here is use the selection tools, the round selection tool. I'm going to focus on uh, trying very hard to uh, select an eye. So a round selection tool around the eye means that I can copy it and paste it onto another layer and treat it separately. So I'm going to name that layer Eye and that means that if I go up to the Move tool I can actually treat that eye individually. See it's got a soft or feathered edge. I could rub a bit of that off if I wanted to but I can actually put that on as an eye much bigger. I can twist it if I want to and that can be merged back into the face at a, at a later stage. I'll do the same with, with the other eye. I'll get rid of those other layers just so you can see that it is a layer on its own that, that, can, be, that can be a useful thing to do. Now let's make another eye here. Again, going back to the, uh, the manga layer. We make that selection, we copy and paste it, we'll name that eye right or something something like that we'll copy and paste it we'll adjust it to suit i could try and make it much more square like the manga eye but i for speed's sake won't worry too much about that notice that the uh, soft and fuzzy edge goes over the side of the uh, side of the face i probably should get the, the erase tool to erase that a little bit but uh, time wise uh, We'll speed through that for the moment. Now, what we're going to do here, you'll notice you've got your eyes. We can use the Merge Down tool to actually bring them all onto the same layer. Experiment with that. It's a good thing to do. Now, one last thing to experiment with in this really rushed sort of thing is we can go to the Filter menu and go to the Filter Gallery to see all the different sorts of options. and. I'm just going to race through a few of these now, but it's in your interest to uh, take some time to really examine and study and, and adjust each of these options. Every one of them has heaps and heaps of uh, different possibilities for you to uh, look into. So you'll find some that seem to work really nicely, some that uh, just don't work, and it's dependent on the image that you start with as to how well they work, and it's dependent on the look that you're after. So I've looked, looked through a number of them. Try to examine as wide a range that, as you possibly can, because uh, they'll come back to you on a later project and you'll know, know what the possibilities are. And that's a, that's a helpful thing. So. We're just about at our, at our finish. Don't forget as you uh, progress through a project to anticipate the, uh, the need to save. In fact, you probably should have saved by now, particularly if you're happy with what, you're, what you've been doing. And uh, what you'll note when we come to the uh, saving uh, stage is that what started as a JPEG image cannot be saved as a JPEG now without losing important information. We've got several different layers and JPEGs only save as a flat or one layered image. So we want to save this as a Photoshop file so that we can open it again and maybe uh, choose one of those layers and print one of those layers separately because really we've got many uh, images all in one. Thank you for listening.